Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We are back in the building. I go by CEO Peso. Blessed and highly favored. Got my guy. A lot of motherfucking history. A lot of fucking conversations. Man, been on the Midwest, West Coast with my nigga, man. And shit, he just a nigga that I value his opinion every time we talk, man. Peter MC is in this motherfucker, man. Yeah, bless him, bro. This, this real talk, bro. I think that um, oh my God. <clears throat> throughout like, our history, I feel like you've always kind of treated like that. Like, literally, you just if you think about the times we came in contact with each other mm-hmm. from way back when, right? Yeah. I feel like you valued my word a little bit. You, I mean, so <laughs> you always, I mean, like, you to me, though, I mean, we don't got no crazy age difference, but yo, notoriety and doing this shit, it was OG to me. So I just was like, I was blessed to just be a sponge with no ego. And anybody who I encountered that, <coughs> excuse me, that I thought was worth listening to, remember, shit, I just gravitate towards that shit. That's what's up, yeah. Nah, it was, that was a dope era. I think you went through a lot of dope eras. Like, that's the thing now, watching, watching your growth. You had full errors, bro. <laughs> like, also, you feel me? So, like, you know, shout out to that. Nah, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. But, you know, I mean, getting you on here, like, I'm trying to build a platform. And then, bro, you always just, man, when we talk, we talk. Uh, on, on top of everything else that you be having going on musically and everything, because I'm always trying to make sure, you know, whatever I can do to help you with the shit, I do it. But, Man, you're a respectable individual, man. You definitely had had and still got your errors of still oh, yeah, I, your I'm, name, man. I'm building. I, I I will tell you this, bro. Like, for the first time in a, in a long time, I feel like, ref, like refreshed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like I'm dragging on some long history or holding on, like, to some old, like, like I'm kind of like... I like where I'm like I like where I'm at. I like where things is at. I know it's a difficult time for people because of the pandemic. The pandemic worked a lot in my favor. To be honest with you, bro. Yo, at, at one point the pandemic, as far as I remember, we got to put everything out. But you did have some stumbles across during the no, pandemic. Don't get me wrong. I just lost <laughs> the most, some of the most important pieces to my life. Like a week ago, uh, my, my cousin, uh, who was like the first on my mom's side, like. At one point, this is me and her. I just lost her to uh, COVID. Uh, rest in peace, Kawana Barrow. Um, I lost my homeboy, Chris, like maybe two weeks before that. You know what I'm saying? Like to COVID. Just a, um, a Cambridge legend. You know what I'm saying? Um, we lost a lot of people during it. So I know that everybody was kind of um, dealing with that side of it. But I came from a lot of loss growing up. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm a... Shout out to Peloton, shout out to Chicago, shout out to, like, the people that I, like, went to high school around early on and the people who I was in the streets around early on. Like, a lot of my street friends, like, whether they did 18, 20, they just got out, or whether they did, they done, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I lost a lot of people growing up, so the pandemic, that, lost, it's easier for you to deal with. It's not easier, I well, lost close people, but I definitely, like, at this time, I just think how I deal with loss of people is, like, I mean, you just got your way of mourning, in a sense. Is that what it is? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I lost a lot of people, man. Yo, uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, Ness Words. I lost Ness Words maybe like four or five years back, man. That's your Columbus on me, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you sent me, uh, I think his last mixtape <clears throat> he put out or something. Yeah, yeah, I sent that you That shit some was stuff dope. Ness. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ness got a, 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 an engaging story. Um, it's not really heard completely. I watched a, a city of people that he loved, not really put a lot of time into what really happened in his life. And I'm watching his kids grow. Like, as I spend time to like learn his kids, like it's been crazy. So I think um, even though I've had close family members, I had friends and stuff. I think for some reason, me watching Ness be a like. Like who I seen him to be in the culture, mm-hmm. and to lose him, like I lost people who hurt to me, like family. But I felt like like the world lost this dude. You know what I'm saying? So why you? But why do you speak so highly on, on him, though? Man, cause bro, like 
Cause I'm from Dayton, Ohio, bro. We were like you. You understand how Dayton is. Me and you didn't have conversations off camera, just very deeply about how we both feel about different people that we didn't came up with actions and how we carried art in our own selves and interactions. Yep. Um, I've been around a lot of people, bro, and I remember being around this dude who is from the hood. He's not like a, you know, a suburban <laughs> dude. This nigga is like a Youngstown Crip or some shit. Like he's very he's very he's from the hood you feel me mm-hmm. he carried himself with all his love like we went places and he just i remember walking like 20 minutes off high street watching him stop talk to like bums and give them compliments and give people change like by the time we left the whole block he ain't had no money i didn't witness him do this like four different times so he was just he's that. just bro he's just a very forwarding loving like he wants everybody to win he used to speak so highly of everyone in this in his city bro i used to be like man i, I hate coming to columbus like sure for real. Like, but he just was that he'd be like bro you gonna love it here they're gonna love you because they love me it's gonna be like that he predicted everything he was gonna do but he thing when i met him he said it has never been a rap act ever on uh whatever it was uh, it's one of the festivals Confess, and, and he died as he's the headline. So b- before he headlined, before. when I met him, there was no rap act. No, rap but he passed act. away before he actually had to perform. No, he performed, uh-huh. and that was the last time anyone for real had ever seen him alive. Goddamn! Right, it's some prophet. I'm telling you, bro. Like my man's story, everything he left behind has humbled me. His wife has humbled me. Like, his kids, like, everything that I go through, like I said, I feel refreshed. Like, everything I go through is, is cake. I'm st- I'm still here. I love my babies. I'm able to make it better for my babies every day. I'm able to call and check on them and FaceTime them every day. I'm able to, to contact my mom. Me and my dad ain't spoke, like, nice in five years. We were at my, <laughs> at my cousin's funeral a week ago. Yeah. Just bumped into each other. And- but I'm saying, though, like, dealing with the... De- <clears throat> dealing with the losses that you didn't dealt with, yeah. uh, close people. How do you not let that deter you into like, you know, getting reckless or getting careless? Um, or like what? I'm, what balances you? I'm aware, bro. Like, like I said, sh- rest in peace, Ness, bro. Like, sometimes you see things in real life that trump any movie you've ever watched. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah! I watched the dude. I'm re- I re- have you, you've known me a while, bro. I rarely have ever said I watch somebody who's better at movies or if it's rap shit like barely ever. ever. I don't even think I ever heard you even like, say those shit like that. I watched the dude that made me feel like like and he was never competitive of all times like I meet this dude who is just as if not well sharpened with all sides of his sword who's now going in like crazy and he never wants to be competitive with me. He wants to meet me, like speak to. He met me based off. I know your music. I know where you from. Oh, here, here, uh, here. He's this just tree. a supporter. Here, this tree, bro. Go roll this tree up for us so I can finish selling these shirts and like get back. Like everything was so organic, meeting dude. And then musically, I was like, yo, this is my favorite rapper. Like as he, music. Where you from? He from? He at the time. He yeah. Was, he was in Columbus. Bro. Oh, okay, okay. Are you talking about Ness? Yeah. Oh, I thought you. Okay, okay. So, so when I watch that stuff, bro, when I watch watching a life like that happen from the from the background, like I'm my stuff is easy. Like I live. You feel me? My kids is alive. All my friends, me and you go through a lot of the same things <laughs> people, bro, like, But watching his story and watch what happened after he died, you know what I'm saying? It made me address how I'm gonna move a mouse way easier now. I know what to expect. I know y'all I know these niggas is not peso, bro. You get know what I'm saying? Yeah, you tapping in deep, but I'm just being real. Shout out to my brother Brooks. My, my man Brooks been in lockup now. DBIC. <laughs> what? Brooks been in the man. Piece. So it's been a minute. It's, yeah. been, it's, it's, it's moved quick, but it, it's it's moved quick. You feel me? But man, like me and Brooks just got off the phone and I'm like, man, I ain't tapped in with your shorty since you've been in jail. And get over there, bro. I'm like, your, your girl, uh, your baby mom gonna be all right with it. Like, bro, yeah, she gonna be cool because 
Bro, it's, it's his son, you feel me? And he was close to his son. But he's the greatest dad of all time. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All my niggas who was in the streets are the best dads, period, that I know because most of them didn't really have, like, dads or influences. They, they're just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Aunt B, man. Aunt B. Just got out. Hey, bro. Aunt B is one of the coldest rappers. And honestly, bro, I think as a father figure, he, he one of the coldest, bro. Like, the way this nigga love his kids make you want to love your kids, bro. Yeah. That's some of my niggas. That's the people I love. That's the best compliments I can give them. Like, damn, bro. Like, the way this nigga love his kid, the way Brooks love that girl, bro. And then, and then they, what? and then they was great father figures before any type of situation happened. For, you know, motherfuckers like shit happened, and then it's like, all right, I need to you turn need into a day. Get good. Yeah, That's or really or good. The, yeah. the you know you got basically you got your dad beats and you got your homies that just been there. Since day one type of shit. And them them the type of niggas that's been there since day one. Not complaining about it, just being what it is. Facts. Yo, you know? are, are your podcasts this deep all the time? It get there. It get there. It's crazy. I, I mean, but you know what it be? It be like the 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 personal relationship with people I got, that's when it get to that point. Right. Cause my podcast okay, it's a platform of, you know, talking about, you know, you know, dreaming and life, you know, life goals and everything. But at the same time, all of this plays into the shit. Right. All of this plays into it. Like, you know, even, even with the I city shit. <laughs> I would definitely let one up. You can. Uh, niggas smoke in here all the time. Yeah, we can smoke in here. Yeah. We'll get to that then. Okay. Oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> but now, nah, man, more about yeah, you, bro, though, man. The real side, that's what I'm saying, brother. It's more about me. Yeah. I, I feel refreshed because I have the people around that I took my best lessons from. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that when a lot of people, when I realized a lot of my friends was watching me, they didn't realize that I was like, for real, like, bruh, that's like me. I remember reaching out to you before you hit me in uh, Huntington that time. And I'm like, bruh, I'm trying to get you to like, and you're like, I'm going to get out there, P. I'm going to move over there. And I'm like, bruh. Uh, back I'm, in Cali. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just feel like I'm always... Like, I can see it. But I told you, I told you in our first engagement, we sat in the studio and you was like, man, I don't see what the hold up be. And I'm like, bro, is I was always two days too late. You know yeah, saying? you've been saying that with the back in Trendset, back in yeah. Uptown, yeah, all of like, that but shit. But I'll be right there. Like, it's not that niggas don't see it, bro. Like, I'll be always waiting to be a day early. You feel me? So sometimes I reach out to catch it. But for me to catch that, the niggas who I have to build, the team I would have to build with it would have to feel that way too. And I'm just never in the position to be. But that shit, it, that shit never fucking stopped your stampede or how you be handling that shit, it, though. I, don't, I think that that never does. By the time it comes down to stampede, I think life. <laughs> you well, know? yeah. Yeah, but I, I guess, the, the you know, not to turn that in, in that conversation, but the circle that was going on with it. it. It's just a lot of fucking history that people don't know. But but you just always been a staple to, like, you know, just to the music atmosphere. Like like I said, you turning me up in Huntington. We out there just getting it done by any means, though. Like, like you, you, you know. You know, shout out to L.A. as a whole, bro. L.A. is... What it do for you? What? Um, Minus the, the obvious of... <laughs> of, of that, but what uh, what what did LA do for you, man? Because because through man. through bro through your through your me knowing you for damn near more than fifteen years at this point, music never stopped. You steady be going, you steady claim your position <laughs> of it, but moving to the areas though, you know, how does it elevate you in your music? Um. LA allowed me to be like more who I really always wanted to be anyway. Which was or is? Um, I guess um uh, just free. Like I don't really have any um like I don't have no I won't say boundaries, I have my own boundaries. I don't have no limitations. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to go where I wanna go. I remember I was in um like every time I was in Dayton. Rest in peace to uh, PC. He always be like, P, every time you rap, you're going to be like, I'm P. 
I'm really real. I really, <laughs> like, I really mean, I really say what I mean in my songs. Like, <laughs> he had this, like, image of me here, right? So for some reason, I remember making songs and always feeling like, damn, I'm, I'm really being what PC said. You know what I'm saying? I was always a rap purist. and I thought I, I, I wanted to take rap to this place. So I did this song, uh, the song Scarface, right? This was, you did that. Yeah, I, I was thinking what the hell the name of it was. Right, but so yeah. I did Scarface. The first time I did it, I rapped it. And it was a horrible session with this. It was in a cash money people session. Didn't you want to take that? <laughs> Even worse. But so <laughs> I'm trying to go through the shit. And uh, it's like piecing out. And this dude who's engineering is terrible. It took me six, seven months to get the session. I send it to Timmy. Timmy, um, I get to the session right before the building closed. True story. Send it to Timmy. Timmy sends it back, and it says me rapping like the words. I'm headed to the shit in Hollywood, and for whatever reason, I just remember feeling like I want to say, I want to, like, belt it. I don't want to just, like, how does rapping shit sound? I want to make it sound like what you heard, right? So what you hear is me coming back to visit Dayton, going to uh, this dude, Brian, and uh, Mike Cooley studio. Yeah. And dropping the one take, then recording it. That when was... First, or that's when I first figured out that sound, though. So even now, how I do it now is so different. Like, it's so much more like, like I know where to go with it now. You feel me? But... It's not just a rap. Like, because that... Because you would... <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? On, on Scarface, it was very... um. Just, it was intricate of how you chose to project it out. Like it was very like I'm telling you, L.A. Deep. Bro, <laughs> I drove, I got in the car, and this is how I felt. I didn't feel like I can't rap it how I feel. It, has, it, it the words will come, but I can't. You know what I'm saying? Like so. That's the first time I got to making a song. It's not the first song I done like that. I think the first song would be. Um, the song right before that, celibacy and shit. Celibacy. Did I shoot that? I in the snow? Did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. it. I just came across that Man, joint. Peso got my yeah. <laughs> I you remember shooting that joint. The, you got the and Reddy was in it. Yeah. Uh, we went downtown. It was the, the feeling. Like, I feel like when I'm doing whatever that, like, it's not singing. It's like a crooning, bro. Like, when, I, when I'm feeling it, you can't really fake whatever that is. So I spent a lot of time, like, curating that while also not losing just rap shit while doing and touching other spaces of shit like LA allowed me to just be who I wanted to be I met so many dope ass artists on different ranges from singing like R&B to <laughs> falsetto I'm talking about it. people who work for Pulse and yeah I mean, LA you went into that shit yeah, quick I, just, I mean easy bro I enjoy meeting I enjoy meeting even until now I enjoy meeting people who really want to be great in their craft but I do notice that I'm from Ohio and the, and the experience that we have in life, you can't fake that. You can't I mean, you can't fake our experience in life. So not to slander Dayton because I never want to do that, but do you, what do you think is the factor of Dayton that that don't catapult us to so we get skipped over a lot to where we don't get it? I think we got to change that vision, that view. The view of that is fat is is wrong. We we don't get skipped over. We we got we got people, respect. Don't get it twisted. We got people who work hard and get in the hard positions. Um, it's just that um, because you can't catapult in Dayton like you think that you can't catapult. You can go to wherever and be the man. You can you can go <laughs> go overseas and you will be popping the man. You yeah, feel me? You, you can go to man. You went to Florida. And I felt like when you was there, like you was Florida for a little. You feel me? Like, Absolutely. You feel me? It had a huge impact on me. But that's what I'm saying. Like wherever we go places, and this is the weird part too. This is some weird dating shit. In LA, it's like dating niggas don't fuck with each other, not only in dating, but also <laughs> in different <laughs> cities. Yeah, like we, we'll see each other, like, and but we nicer to each other. We'll see each other. Hey, what's up, bro? That's what's up. But we won't be like, come. Rocking our shit. I mean, but okay, but do you do you honestly think team? though? I mean, okay, do you honestly think though, if you wasn't kicking it with somebody in Dayton on a level up that, and then you seen them 
in another area, in another city, do you think it's just supposed to be a camaraderie um, because we're from that, the city? No, I think that none of us have lived that way and carried that way. And if we were smart, we would have. If we were smart, we would realize that all those people that we see in the cities that we be at and we bump into niggas from our city, we should have, those niggas should have pieced together every time, like, let's build because we're obviously seeing. I said this to K Magic the third time we bumped into each other. We were at the eight C threes in Atlanta or some shit. Yeah. And I'm like, bruh, like, bro, we ain't got not one nothing. He like, I know P. I got you. Like, this we don't build it, bro. Like, and we we'll see who moving. We got I had a person, bro. There's a person I know. This young lady and this dude know me from the beginning. They knew problem the most hated. You feel me? Very first. The, 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 the first shit, right? Yeah. And her and her I don't know if they married. They might still just be engaged, but her and her fiance was there. They was they were witness to before they were together. They witnessed me, right? Mm. They were both like, and we fuck with you. I'm a fan, whatever. Even though he was more a fan of no, which it was common. We had a thing as they like. <laughs> he was more of a no fan, but he fucked with me. Like man, P dope as fuck. He's never hated on me, right? Right. They move out west, work for a label. She says at one point while they was working for the lady, she said, man, you don't think that we should like try to help P or somebody, you know? He's like, oh man, P is dope. It'll, he'll work it. It'll, like, bro, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's our way. And I'm telling nah, you, like, nah. it's it's our way, bro. Like, we don't, I don't know how to really say it. Like, shout out to man. I, man I'm, shout out Chaos, man, community server. I, I hit server the weekend before he came back. And we go, CJ. I promise to God. We, I was with um he that's when we was LA. out in LA. In I LA. was with him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, bruh, come by my crib, bro. I'm down, I'm in the Orsini. Come by the downtown, holler at me, bro. He like, man, all right, bro, I'm gonna get with you when I leave out there. I'm gonna go see these. I'm visiting some label or something. He was stopping by someplace, whatever. You feel me? Yeah. My homeboy didn't call me. My homeboy my homeboy was road managing black youngster at the time. He um he like, bro, when you get a hold of dude, when you talk to him, bro. Pull him up, man. I want to holler. I'm a, I got a situation. Maybe you have a situation for him. Like, on the CMG side. You feel okay. me? That's dope. I'm like, word. Yo, bro, pull up. Pull up. Yeah, all right, bro. I'm going to hit you when I boo. He goes home. By Thursday, that nigga's on the... It's, it's over with. You feel me? Like... You got like, to hit up. We never get to link like that. I, I, I've been multiple times hollered at uh, Jason, shout out to Jason, Dayton's best cap. Like we just never make it link. It's it's a lot of niggas. I can tell you, bro. I don't I don't know why we live, <laughs> like why we live like this. You didn't witness this. I have. You yeah. didn't win, you didn't you didn't witness multiple times. Shout out to uh, Kodak. Me and Kodak then did this like fifty times now. It started off with me when you uh, introduced me to a uh, young Kodak out there, right? Yeah. And then afterwards, we didn't bumped into each other in Dayton. Then we get back to LA. We had an event. He like, oh damn! Now we the both smoking. Yeah, yeah, we smoking and shit. And um, yeah, bro, like it's 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 a lot. I don't know, bro. I, I wish I could say that I see different. And I know that there are niggas in Dayton that mess with each other in the city, and they're also messing with each other when they leave the city. Yeah. But I'm talking about interchanging with the crews. I once brought. I had my shout out little Cam and uh, Cisco Pink. They bad jeans now. You know what I'm saying? Um. I, I told little Camry I should go to L.A. You know what I'm saying? His whole squad. His whole squad went to L.A. They didn't link with Dirty Squad is out at the same time. You feel me? And nobody's no, Nobody, leaking. listen, bro. I know these niggas. I know these niggas. I know these. Like, and I'm talking about nobody's doing anything. And at the time, bro, can I be honest? I think Dirty's people had to connect with, like, some comedy stuff they could have did. You feel me? And Cam's people are natural... Like this shit would have, but this shit would have been sense. perfect, bro. But no, and then they like, yeah, no, like they know of each other, but nobody. It's just, bro. It's it's how okay. we are, bro. So what what is it that? Cause it seemed like from all the all the circumstances that happened, you still try to just put the link together. Um, I don't know if it's that, but I, I like I said, I know it's something there, bro. I know that it's not an accident that we all left a little tiny as we're not big. You know what I'm saying? And we've all left these places and ended up um, getting there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Sunshine Gerhardt. Her son is out there making beats too. Like, um, 
we all leave and attempt to do something great. And we all get shown at different times that we're amazing at whatever that is. But we don't make it, we don't build it together. So there is no empire. It's just a bunch of little, like, broken kingdoms. Like, he was trying to, like, hold on to their jazz and hold on to their thing. And, like, I told the other day, um, I'm talking to this young lady about what we had at Elbows and the Night Out that's different from what they're able to do now. And I said, man, that's because, for real, we built it off of what our city really just likes to do. Like, what he, we love to love our nigga and hate on everybody else's nigga. You feel me? So my crowd, yeah. my crowd at elbows is six of these dudes came to support their homeboy, the rapper. This dude brought his girl, his homegirl, and her friend, and a couple of his dudes to support him rapping. Right. This dude came because his homeboy gonna be rapping, but it be chicks up there, so he done brought four of his dudes. But nobody really came to be a fan, right? Until, they until the moment is happening now, right? Yeah. Because if it's real. You can't turn it off. You're like, damn, bro, this nigga's dope. Like, whoever it is. You yeah. Know what I mean? And that was the atmosphere we built. We built an atmosphere where all the different sides of people, whether it was like the strange little white dude from Oakwood and brought all his little Oakwood friends. And, and I mean, they bring in a support system, though. They did. And I think that that worked, especially when you tie in that there's this weird little like who's at the top kind of a. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 who, who, who's the, uh, it's, it's, it's that, high school, and man. People want to come to get, people want to come chop down a tree, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was the energy that I think that made the city kind of pop out for an event that had nothing to do with, we filled up every week, and we never had no major nothing, <laughs> like, nobody came through that bitch, it'd be lines in this motherfucker, like, it was just to be a part of, like, that's really what our atmosphere is, we kind of, we, I don't say we haters, but, yeah, we we love our nigga. Fuck your nigga. That's the concept of the whole city. Like, or else we would have a whole. Like, we know everybody. I think that's that's the best con- conceptual way I could it, maybe could you know what, process though? it. I met these new kids. Maybe it's getting way better. The icicle kid gave me hope, and I've met a couple of the young like rappers I've never heard of in the city, like niggas who I. have you know, just so you of, still, you still, I ain't gonna say it like that, but like you don't be like you don't care, but you still definitely be in tune to, to the new talent or the new whoever is coming through. Local wise, I just recently got back listening to Dayton niggas because I feel like, um, I, um, I'm impressed. Like, there's a lot of different sounds and there's a lot of different shit that I never really had an ear for before, but I'm kind of catching like. And it's, and it's the city, and the younger kids, and they really trying to build and connect with something. This event I'm doing, um, this past the Ox event. Uh, Puka Sadi, uh, yeah. Scotty, shouts out to her. Yeah, yeah, and um, they they really build and connect with their people and really provide like a little, like, you can see that they're really trying to make something, you feel me? Yeah. And um, even the kids that they didn't have that's involved in this show that I've met, like, they all, they're not the same, it's not, it, it's that dip, that dip. competitive, whatever energy you get about, like... Like you said, the nigga that's kind of at the top, that nigga's trying to chop down. That's not really in these kids like that. They really just kind of be like, I feel like I'm dope, and I want to, like... Do dope shit. shit. And then if you're dope... I did a, I did a set at... A, not a set, I did a song at um, uh, Wednesday night in Cincinnati. Um, my nigga Fresh <coughs> got a couple of... Uh, Art, Art on the Ave, I believe it's called. Yeah. Yeah, check that out. Wednesday night, they got like an open mic there. And um, I did a, a song, and I watched these young dudes, man, 21, 20, like, so, oh, bro, can I take my number? Can we build? Like, that, that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I can remember going years and someone always bringing somebody for me <laughs> and never saying, yo, P. Can we build? Can you come through? Can we make, like, it was always, I got somebody for you. I got somebody for you. I got somebody that's going to fuck you up next week. You okay, so me? look, look. I've been saying this. Give me an ass straight, too. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I be, hold on. But don't forget what you've been saying. But I've been, I've been saying this, though, because um, you, we was... I've been, like you said, I've been in an era, some eras that passed. You've been in some eras. Would you say that 
we're coming around a new golden era for dating. Cause my my golden era of dating is when I started trying to set to like 2012, 13. And then shit kind of got weird after that when all these like clicks started really clicking up. Or I don't know. I don't know about a I don't know if we ever had a golden era outside we of did. the funk, bro. Like Bro, no, we did, bro. Funk, bro no, 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 no. I'm a, this is why I'm saying we had a golden era. Because of the influence from like 04 to like 2012, 13 had on the city, bro. Like music. Bro. When we were when shows were still being shows, when Dayton had saying, clubs. Bro, that that to you, you would think that's a golden era, but I'm telling you as a nigga from the two eras beforehand, each one of them niggas would feel like that they had that too. When I be listening to niggas' stories about like like the night out, I'll be like amused. But then I also realize it's these niggas like um what's my nigga? Eclipse period. I don't know if you ever heard of him or like Wild and the H O C um Tomb. Like all these people that they did shit way bigger and they not they're this I don't know how to explain it, bro. Like like they they're my el they're my your influences. I guess bigger because they really y'all influences. Y'all just didn't know that right, we, was. It, it's affecting us, but you was there around right. it. Around Yo, them. Uh, Reek B, bro. Reek B is in Houston right now, but, bro, like, uh, C3O, I remember when he made it on to. Uh, they from Dayton? All these? Bro, C3O got on to Late Night BET, right? He 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 had the city going up, 275. Yeah, Rob Jackson, like, yeah. Uh, was He was here where he a Kentucky nigga. Rob Jackson. Rob Jackson made me slow my raps down. I wanted to rap like I wanted to be a better rapper, and I felt like he was figuring out how to get more bars and like and like slowly, but in more like he was, bro. He was fucking my whole world up. You feel me? <laughs> like Rob Jackson. Yo, here, here's my dating story, bro. Shout out to my nigga Kill, bro. Uh, <laughs> the homie. Yeah, man. He, bro, bro. I remember I was supposed to meet Rob Jackson, bro. I was excited, like, like I'm at this point, I'm an adult, like I'm grown and shit. I'm not like some fucking child and shit. And he's, and he's not Rob Jackson anymore. He's like the guy who was Rob Jackson. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but I'm excited, bro. My <coughs> reputation for battle rap P somehow had spilled over to Rob Jackson. They're like, oh, but when you bump into this guy, don't would it, like it was like <laughs> warning, like don't be this because. And when, when I got to meet him, bro, he brushed me off. And, and the homie had to tell me, like, yeah, somebody already told him, like, when you bump in the pee, <laughs> watch it. Yeah, the heads up type bro, shit. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, like, that was a moment that I missed in the city, bro. But, yeah, it was, it was I think that would be, is that a golden era? There's an era, no, it is. There's an era in, there's a story that they call the night that Dayton Hip Hop changed. And that's before, like, even the art time, bro. They had a fight at the memorial. When was this? Like, I guess like ninety something, probably like two thousand or ninety nine, something like that. Why was they saying I, it was I a be, night that I be in in Skano lightweight switch lives that night? Like weirdly enough, I be had this radio job and then Skano had it or something. Like it's like a whole, bro. Let me not say like it's like a whole story for real. I'm being, I'm speaking vaguely because one day I'm a hold out. I know every side of the story. Right? I didn't got, I, I didn't befriended. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we And so yeah. I'm going to wait for, like, I met the dude who threw the first punch, bro, in Columbus, my nigga. Openly was like, yeah, that was there that night. I threw the first punch. A dating nigga I met in Columbus, bro. The night dating hip hop <laughs> changed. Yo, we had two songs on the radio. Niggas was getting, niggas got a deal. Niggas went, yo, niggas don't ever talk about the group uh, Mood. I'm not hip. Right. You got to wow. think, you know, I'm younger yo. than you, bro. It's a group of niggas, and then they split up, and then they became something else, like the Greens or something. They had a real, they had deals, bro. Like the niggas went and got deals and came back. The one nigga now, uh, he he does something in the marijuana industry, and he's real tight with like Dave and shit, like you know what I'm saying. And the other nigga was like Brother Death. He came back trying to battle rap and chop heads. Yeah, bro, bro, listen, bro, Dayton had a golden era way beforehand. Another okay, well, I'm speaking on my golden yeah. era and my generation, though. So, with you being around the areas of it and seeing all of that shit, 
what show does what what show level of like sensibility or do do it frustrate you? Do it you just be like, what hope do you have for dating? It used to when the first time I quit, bro, I had no belief system. It was done. I felt like if these niggas will let me, <laughs> if these niggas will let me and all these dope ass niggas slide past, this is um in 08, we knew each other. Um, uh, what's my nigga had just passed? Rest in peace, um, Q Stone. Q Stone. Yeah. Um, I I thought that uh. That's my nigga. Ugh. I, I, Mr. Ugh. I thought uh, Jesus was going to be that nigga. <laughs> I did, bro. My bad hit the mic. Nah, you good. Hey, so, yeah, that I nigga. Was he he was coming nigga. through with some, and, some heat. Uh, it was a lot that had happened that year, bro. And also what had happened, honestly, too, um, the year beforehand, the best project to come out in Dayton history, uh, I mean, as far as rap is concerned, to me, that uh, Schedule 1 had dropped. I know niggas be sleeping on the schedule. They one. are. They are. Um, but schedule one drops. So now I'm listening to some of the best production, listening to all these new rappers coming with all this new whatever, and they doing it themselves. Niggas is producing, rapping. And I'm like, bro, I'm old, bro. It's over with. You feel me? And I'm looking at how the niggas sound. Like, man, we old. These new these new niggas is, you know what I'm saying? This is like. Getting it done. I'm, I'm meeting uh, Sleeko. You know what I'm saying? And now he's. He's he's just able to like craft these like like man this is nothing like the yeah, effortless man, just he's yeah. amazing he's is you know what I'm saying yeah. and then I'm meeting and then now y'all got flam and I'm meeting all, it's like everything the scope I remember telling y'all niggas don't Wu Tang yourselves like, don't Wu Tang we didn't yourself. know I mean, we was around each other <laughs> nah they J R them low key did. At some point, I, well, I was involved yeah. with that too when we when we was doing the nineteen thirteen thing. Bro, I at that time I was retiring because I understood that these new niggas is way, like, bro, you was a cameraman, engineer, and like you was doing extra shit. You feel me? Manager. Everybody in a did sense. all kind of shit, and I'm just like some fat old nigga that got some kids, and I'm pretty dope at this. I got this one thing, but yeah. I can't really get niggas to see it because it wasn't as viable. As like being able to paint an image was, or being able to like just going on what was going on, uh, kind so. of basically respectfully just saying like kind of keeping up with the change. I gracefully bowed, which helped me out because when I bowed, I got to be a fan first. You feel me? Yeah. So a lot of niggas don't understand like like I was a fan. I was a fan of Star like based off of the music. I did. I didn't. Personality at the time, I think we had a fell out at the time or some shit like. But I'm like, bro, this nigga's bananas. You feel me? Yeah. Um, it was so many niggas doing so much dope shit. I just felt like I was. I, I'd rather sit back and be a fan than Kendrick comes. So, so I was about to say, what about you back out from oh, retirement? Bro, uh, this Asian, this half Asian dude there, bro. He ain't my friend no more, I guess. But this half Asian dude who loved the uh, old song I had, his name was Mike Maddox. And uh, he loved a song I had. And he was like, bro, if you could just do this song for me. And then he was like, asked me to, like, be on a song with him. I'm like, but I don't even rap no more. For real. I'm done with this shit. And then, like, the first verse I wrote was the Mont Stinks. It's on YouTube and shit. And, like, he was, it was his for his song. And then it just became my shit. And then. You just ran with it. Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of felt like, man. And at the time, it was still, like, I was still doing Super rap, like I was still over. I want to say more advanced. I had to, I had to slow down, bro, to catch my my own wave. You feel me? To find my flavor, I had to go somewhere else, not be around whatever I'm so, around to make me be me. So not dumbing it down, but just uh, just being switch more up. Me, but yeah. shout out to my nigga. If you ever you met the nigga, my nigga, young Triv, bro, my nigga Triv, bro. My nigga Triv allowed me to be myself, bro. Like, fuck with the, don't do that. Just do this. Just be, whatever we feel. We're going to jump in the booth. I'm about to say some shit. It's going to be one take. We in there, bro. We was going through shit. Bro, you heard some of this shit. This shit was going whammer, bro. Like, I was in there going hammer with this nigga. Like, just getting to be myself. Not having nobody in my city say, oh, man, you old ass nigga. You old, you ain't supposed to be doing whatever. Niggas don't even know how old I am in L.A. Right, yeah. Yo, that's the thing about going out of town and 
like not re- oh I guess it's recreating yourself, but at the same time, it's like it's just it don't got that stigma. Like I realize I reached the uh hitting the ceiling here because I would be get referenced that peso that was in the garage in Trotwood, it always was just like a stigma of like, nigga, I know who you really are. Hey. Where whereas in LA it's like oh uh, nah, you peso that's it's dope nigga, as fuck. And you know, in Dayton, I'm problem. The niggas walk up on me, I ain't seen these niggas in and I'm problem. Bro, it's niggas who done witness and bought the last few CDs, know the songs, and still be like, problem. They will book me and say, can I book you? And, and, <laughs> and write problem on there, bro. Like, for some reason here, whatever that is, I left here, whatever that energy is, it's it's still here, bro. You feel me? I don't get to just leave it because I want to. You feel me? But that's so it's love. I get it. It's here. But, so, but you're saying, though, it's always been here? It just won't leave. I, I don't get to be Peter MC in all the times in Dayton, Ohio. Right. Maybe to the new kids, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but to the old people, to the people who got more, the yeah, I'm problem, and they don't, they will not let me forget whatever that, whatever I've done. As it won't, it won't leave. And yo, when me and you talk about Star, right? I see Star as just musically, just damn this nigga. He know, he know who gonna pop. Three years before they pop. He He's a fucking A&R, and he'll bro. He'll be like, yo, this nigga right here about to blow. This is the new shit right here. And it's been a couple times now, though. That's the thing now. So now that I done got free, you feel me? Yeah. It's been a couple times that I done did this shit to him. Like, oh, bro, I'm listening to this and shit. Because now I'm, I don't know, bro. I'm in fucking Florida. I'm in fucking Atlanta. I'm in fucking Texas. I'm in I'm wherever I want to be at and shit. So now I'm like, damn, like, I'm listening to it. You Whoever. Yeah. And then I'm meeting niggas. And then niggas is like. Yo, you just you I just being introduced to a, you just can, can you, you being introduced to a lot of different atmospheres of music going to all these places and yeah. and and it's you know you soaking it in because you you're you're a fan of music period Flat. yeah yeah so I, I'm grateful that it found me but my dating shit is what got me there like if I didn't go through sitting in my dope spot getting hated on I'd have never got dope at freestyle if I never got through having somebody being brought to me every week I'd have never got dope at improvising how to create a different you know what I'm saying style of a flow or cadence every fucking week you feel me yeah and then the same with musically I had to bump my head I had I, I used to tell you when I first met you but like I, I hate recording because I, I can't rock nobody like it's it's just you in this booth and it took me a minute to learn how to like rock nobody yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying where most of the kids like nobody. I know, they yeah. grew up and they this is in their bedroom JR has been JR the whole time bro you feel me so I can't, I will never think I can go compete with that or whatever. It's just, I just also know, like, it's shit on my end that niggas, these niggas can't do. And it took me a while to kind of relearn that. That's my refreshment. Like, oh, man, I'm dope learning this new shit. This is cool, you know what I'm saying? But I also almost forgot, like, oh, you niggas can't do. So this. are you, so with the, with the, with the new music and the new people that you hear. Yeah. Um. All right, what what do you what are you gaining from it when you listen to it? Um, like that 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 you either you put into your music or you just put into. I just gotta understand it's not it's not one. So I'm a little older, so I feel like old niggas always think that everything is for them. You feel me? Because they grew up and the shit was for them. But um, whatever this feel is that these niggas got, like I be trying to tune in. I miss it sometimes. Like, I miss Young Thug. I don't, I can't figure out what the bop is. You feel me? But, like, hey, it's a nigga from the city, the uh, the Racks and the Rental Kid. Oh, uh, yeah, Trap. But that shit is, Robin, I didn't probably, I ain't even all, all exaggeration aside. I didn't probably put a thousand spans on that bitch. You feel me? Just me. That joint with him and Dirty? Yeah, that's my shit, bro. You, you know, uh, Moose and the manager. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah he family. Bro, that shit go. Okay. And now this is the this is the funny part. I've only met that kid once and I don't think that he really digs me that <laughs> like his our our engagement with He fast other. paced. No, nah, no, nah, he cool as fuck. I'm just saying, like I, you know how when you when you around somebody you could be like, they ain't nigga vibe with. I could feel like I'm not his vibe. You feel me? Like when we was in the studio even by ourselves together, like it didn't it wasn't like a, like <laughs> you feel me? But music, knowing him though, I kinda <laughs> I can see how that shit would go. But but musically wise, like 
Bro, I'm rocking with, like I'm talking about, I'm in LA bobbing to this shit. You feel me? I'm with my nigga, uh, shout out Murder Baby. I'm with, like, bro, that shit is its own movement to me. And I think I, I um, Candy Bars mess with them. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I told her, like, man, I think that y'all might want to look into doing a project with them two together and just juggle it off of it. A little 6 EP or something, a little, like, like uh, it remind me of uh, all the jokes that I remind me. Of like how OG Maco and Fat Man Key was, and that made them become who they became. Turn up, yeah. You feel me? So I feel like they are both win off that kind of situation because the, the way they sound with each other, that little up and down. Ah, oh, bro, that shit's tough, bro. And that Rex <laughs> nigga, that shit is tough, bro. I love that, that. shit is tough, bro. Rex been at it for a minute too. I, I was shooting some of his first shit when he first got into it. I think he. He just young, I full of energy, man. Do with me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rex, man, he he animated, out. but he know, yeah. man. So, um, you got new music out, right? Uh, yeah, bro. You know, my thing is, I got I got a lot of music, and I got shit I gotta finish. Uh, shout out to Timmy Woods for having patience with me, bro. This nigga you been rocking with Timmy Woods for a minute. Bro, Timmy is the, the bro, like a minute though. Bro, Timmy, bro. Tell me the first nigga to take a shot, shot for real on me, bro. Like everybody else kind of played with me. I ain't gonna ever put no names out, but just know, bro. All them niggas you know in the city, I went through all them niggas and went each one of them. I, I don't know what never worked out, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just telling you, as me and you, as I done sat in your studio and told you this beforehand, I'm like, bro, I don't know what kicked off, but it never worked. And you was like, nah, I'm like, yeah. Like niggas ain't gonna want me on that song. <laughs> Like that's how I feel about it. Yeah, that's man. how. Bro, I'm telling you, my whole shit has been that. So Timmy was the first nigga, even though he had niggas, and his niggas didn't necessarily like me, bro. Like he took a shot, and we didn't build every day. And I love that nigga. Like I was over there uh, two, three days ago when I was supposed to link with you the first time. I came in town and shit. Mm -hmm. I went by Timmy's, bro. This nigga played me two songs. I didn't record it and never finished. I have never heard in my life. Bro. He like, bro, you came through. You be high. You be like, yo, Timmy. Throw this song. Don't and just I, go. Bro, he 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 played me some shit. He said, I came in, I freestyled. I said, I don't like none of that shit, but play it over. And I went like two bar by two bar listening to the freestyle, turning the actual freestyle cadences into like, bro, there's some fly shit didn't happen over there. You feel me? And I don't remember none of this shit. He be doing this shit all the time, bro. Like, so I just got to kind of consolidate all them songs, the ones that I feel also had that feel because I, I don't. Not that I'm not going to use them dope ass little rap shits that I've been created, but the ones that got that that feel, yeah. you feel me? That it sound that has the the uh, the substance, the it's something. Whatever yeah, that the, is, well, you that know, is, you know yeah, what the fuck that yeah. spark in it, that all spark, that shit that is is deeper than a rap song, or it's deeper than a soul song. Like I guess it'd be a soul song. It's something that speaks to more than just your. You know what I'm saying? I want to build those things, but I also always like to be charged with my rap shit, like, cause I I'm still I love rapping, like I still love the, the charge of listening to dope new rappers and niggas that come in and shit. It's a lot of new date, the the bars kid out of date, and it's a couple cats out the city I never really heard of until this rotation and checking them out and being like, damn, it's a whole bunch of niggas. I'll be watching the chicken coop. Chicken, thing. yo, he putting them on like it's. So many new motherfuckers mm. that that I be like, who is this? But it's just a new wave of motherfuckers coming in. I ain't in. been through Chicken Chop yet, and I feel like I gotta go just because everybody done went and shit. Nigga, I feel like I gotta go. I don't even rap. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's just. Yeah, I, I just love the new platform and, and the the way right. that he putting it you on know for who people. Got the best shit on there so far. Well, on uh, yeah, lap Chicken Coop shit, lap. Yeah. Who? who your favorite shit on there? It's this one kid too I like, but I keep forgetting. The it was a nigga with a holding a dog, or, or I don't know. He was just different though. All right. You talking about the singing nigga? Yeah, that's for season. That's a kill, son, bro. Nigga fire, bro. Niggas fire. Hey, bro. Shout out to four seasons, bro. I remember this nigga was seventeen, bro, and told me like I remember watching this nigga argue with his dad about him doing this music shit and knowing what's gonna happen and shit, bro. I remember him being in L.A. Like, I'm, I'm talking about, bro, why niggas... You, you should have been met this nigga. Like, that nigga has been this dope since... Bro, since I, I'm telling you, 
It's always been there. How come y'all have never? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. My favorite right now, honestly, is uh, uh, Peter Prophet shit, bro. <laughs> mm, yeah, and we, 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 we fire, nigga. Hey, listen, bro. We, <laughs> I just told that dude. I saw another day. Like, man, you should get whatever the chicken chop chop version is and just run with that version because I like that version better. We were just talking about that. It's got the the, the, the like the real life atmosphere. That shit sounds cold. Hey, that shit is cold blooded, bro. Nah, yeah, Only you, thing you, I wish he would have did, I wish instead of doing this, he would have picked up the guns because he had the guns on him. You feel me? So I feel like that would have been more. He was on his Rambo shit, though. But I'm saying if he would have did that instead of doing the gun. Uh, oh, yeah, just you know the real life. Because they, they was had, there. They was there. It would have turned it up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says sticks. I'm a, I'm a nigga. Hey, that shit is. Th- yeah, shout out to. Uh, I watched Profit, that dude. Man. Yeah, bro. I've watched that dude since the probably the first time he rapped. In public, I'm hit. I'm hit. I know. I know yeah, like I, I, it's been a crazy adventure watching my niggas become dope, bro. But all, my little niggas all became dope as fuck. You feel me? Shout out Flam. Shout out my nigga who's the president of the school board. You know, man, <laughs> man, goddamn it. Uh, yeah, I forgot his real name, but hey, shout out No. Hey, No. Uh, last night I watched. I rewatched your battle on a uh, scribble jam. And you you won that shit, bro. You should have for real. They I don't know, bro. We we as I look back at it, bro. They did rob you, bro. You probably should have won that scribble jam. Yo, I got a. I'm gonna show you after this. I got a video of Noah from 2009. Jefferson, he was freestyling with Flam and everybody. Yeah, and it's classic. Yeah, Nov is a, bro. <laughs> Nov was, bro. Yeah, man. I I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like I said I I think we had a golden era. But I don't consider it a golden era because it was so many great eras. And well, we had an influence. Changed, things changed so much. Me and Nova is the last of the era where you had to be nice off the top of your head. Like everyone else after us, you didn't have to really be that no more. You could just come prepared with like 40 months of written and songs you remembered and shit. Like you had to be good now. Yeah. When we niggas show up. You know Live. And that's, I don't know. So yeah, man, like man, that's a different era of shit. But I respect all that shit. It was a lot of dope ass niggas from our shit, bro. Man, hella dope ass niggas, bro. That's why I, I love it. To me, it it it, it made me who I am. You don't remember all the Tay Nitties? <laughs> it used to be three Tay Nitties, bro. And it was and though. Then one Tay Nitty beat up the other Tay Nitties. See, I wasn't in. Yeah. I wasn't Rest tuning in into that. One of them niggas uh got murdered in uh Summer Square by off duty. Man, so we're going to wrap up, though, but I'll be asking everybody this question. What's a good quote or a piece of advice that you live off of? That I live off of? That I can give myself or I can give other people? Yourself. What's something that just stuck with you that you just, you like, damn? Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to eat. Break that down, though, in your, in your uh, way. In my world, man, um... I have, as you know, two children's mothers. Um, you met my lady. You met a lot of things in my life like that I lived through. You feel mm-hmm. um, everybody got to eat, bro. So in my world, everybody can't be comfortable unless, unless everybody's comfortable. Child supports have to be paid on everybody's side. You know what I'm saying? If I, if, if my kids are eating well, then you know, I'm, if I'm making sure they're eating well, I can't do that unless I'm eating well. I can't be happy unless this person's happy. I can't be making this money. It takes everybody to eat. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah. I, when you like, how you do I still got faith in the city? Yeah, because everybody got to eat. Just because I don't like you don't mean I also don't want you to Only win. see you win, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to win. It'll keep your money. It'll keep your eyes off my pockets. It'll keep everything getting better. I won't have to worry so much about your kids being shitty. Everything will become better when everybody starts eating. And this mentality that only I can eat has to get stumped out. Like we got to stump that out. That's especially as black people right now. I think that's what we're finding out. We, the people who have been eating have been eating by themselves and they just been holding on to this information. And that kind of make you mad sometimes when you find out okay. your friend who know how to work the housing market knew how to work it for 10 years and didn't have one conversation with you about 
how you can work it with them or, or investment in you. That Acting like you, a gatekeeper. Bro, that's what yeah. you realize. Like, we went through it musically. You feel me? We witnessed all these gatekeepers. We know who you are. We live through you. And, and you got to be like, man, you knew this whole time how to sign a split sheet. <laughs> you knew this whole time how to like. Critical shit, though. How to get me in touch with this guy who do licensing. You had a, 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 a entertainment lawyer. And you could have easily said, yo, P, go get, like, but no one's ever done this shit, you feel me? And these are niggas who got production credits and all that. They get royalty checks in the city. They know exactly what they're doing. They know the formula. They, they just don't want to share it with you. Because, like, what, it's going to stop their money? It's People a, think that, like a motherfucker. But it's not real, bro. Yeah. At one point, all your friends was videographers. None of y'all missed a fucking dollar, bro. I know because I've paid all of you. <laughs> I paid oh, every one of you niggas, bro. Whether it was little money, it was a little money I fucking had, and I paid all of you niggas, bro. You feel me? And none of y'all missed a dollar, bro. Yeah. Nobody missed no work. It was more niggas being mad that work wasn't getting done more than us than pay so have hella work, bro. You feel me? If y'all niggas could have figured it out, we had a film crew. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I'm saying, bro. Everybody gotta eat. If you if if I could tell myself that when I was um shit man fifteen if I would have figured it out you know what I'm saying I think at fifteen I was I wasn't stingy but my niggas gotta eat not your niggas you right feel me? Yeah. and and I had that mentality kind of growing up to even getting to a point where it was just me I'm eating fuck you niggas you know what I'm saying so as I got past that and I went through everything I went through I went through everything uh, dealing with love matters dealing with kids dealing with Money, because you're a man. People only love you on condition when you're a man. When you're a man, you gotta provide. You gotta come with something. You feel me? When you when you ain't when you can't come with nothing, you ain't shit. Like that's how people treat you. Like you ain't yeah. got nothing. You ain't got nothing to give me. You ain't got nothing to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? So every man gotta eventually come to that bridge too, and figure out how they gonna do that. Like. No one shows you that. When, and that's what hurts you a little bit because a nigga could have. A nigga could have been like, yo, bro. It prevented a lot of shit. Bro, don't do that. You know why I love my niggas? Shout out to my nigga Brooks. Bro. My nigga Brooks would be like, man, look at this rapper. This is the only rapper that doesn't want to be a rapper, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Everybody, look at the rapper who doesn't want to be a rapper. You want to yeah. sit and date. What you going to do? Hey, but you can't <clears throat> get no, uh, what do you say? You can't get no Lambo in them time. I want to check. That shit used to sting, boy. You feel me? That's true. But it is true. And then I went to L.A. and I started trying to find my way. So everybody got to eat. And even right now, shout out to my nigga Brooks who just said, shout out real nigga from the feds who ain't have to turn over on nobody to get ahead. Uh, also said, bro, you know what, bro? My, 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 my people said, man, I ain't even think that about P being the one of the realest niggas that you got because niggas ain't really – Doing what they supposed to be doing, you know what I'm saying? But I've been trying to remain consistent. So my yeah. nigga, like, yeah, so everybody got to eat, bro. My, if y'all niggas ain't going to feed my nigga YN, I'm going to feed my nigga YN. Period. Shout out to my, my homegirl, uh, Teeny, out in L.A. taking care of the four little Nesses. Everybody got to eat, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to both my children's mothers. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to motherfucking, like, like Sandy. Shout out to... To, uh, it's a group, but it's so many people that I know that really be eating. Shout out low, shout out to the people who really take care of their kids and and and, and want to see their people that they love advance and get ahead. I just want everybody advance and get ahead, bro. Everybody gotta eat, even you, bro. I remember throwing you hella ideas just to tell you, like, whatever it is, bro. Nah, Pay for some. real, yeah. Now, nah, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good convos, man. Yeah. Look, Peter, Peter yeah, yeah, yeah. MC, man. This is Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Y'all keep on dreaming. We out this bitch. Yo, holla. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. <laughs>